Welcome back to Edmund State Dynasty. In the last episode, we managed to get our first two games underway, and we unfortunately lost both of them, but I have made some changes to our recruiting board. Obviously, our number one prospect is still going to be quarterback Morgan Eberle or Eberly. I think I'm just going to call him Eberly. I feel like it's a lot easier to say. Then we have a three-star corner in Stanley Perfect. He was also here in the last episode. I finished scouting kicker Sean Augustine. Turns out he is a three-star but a gym prospect. I also added a three-star left tackle in Oscar Almodovar. Yeah, sure, whatever. He's also a gym prospect. And then running back Skylar Lewis. And the main reason I added him... One, no one's really going after him yet, but he does have 93 speed, which could really, really help us out. Past him, though, it's just a bunch of two-star guys that I'm just waiting to see if anyone's going to try to come in and take from us at the last minute. This team obviously needs as much help as it can possibly get, but we really can't get that help until the end of this season, so let's go ahead and jump into our third game of this year. All right, we don't even get a chance to come into this game until the second quarter where we are down 10 nothing. but we are at the five-yard line. Give that to Dylan Turner, and we're going to get nothing. I guess he at least got a couple yards on that, so let's go ahead and audible this play, and let's give it back to Turner, see if we can't just fight our way into the end zone. Will the blocking hold up? Absolutely not as we get body slammed. All right, a third and goal from the five-yard line. A shotgun set will drop back. We're going to try to go to our tight end, who will make the catch, and Jones is into the end zone. Touchdown, Edmund State. All right, finally letting us jump into some of these scenarios now. They are all the way down to the 19-yard line, but it's a first and 10, and I completely whipped on that, so let's see if we can get him down here. That'll just go down for a gain of three. That honestly could have been a lot worse, and apparently they're going to run a no-huddle offense here. So on second and seven, let's switch to a guy that's rushing because I feel like I'm a lot better at that than anyone in coverage. They'll give it to the running back, and he's going to end up getting close to the marker, and he'll fight his way for the first down. They're still going to keep the no-huddle offense going, so I guess we'll call the blitz and see if we can't force him to do something quickly. Are we going to be blitzing with our corner? Yes, we are. So Westbrook comes out on the blitz, and they're going to get to walk into the end zone. All right. I warned you guys in the last episode I am not good at defense on this game, and obviously nothing has changed between episode one and two. But on third and four, we will give it to our running back, and he gets stood up immediately. Can we at least get a chance to kick the field goal? They will give that to us, so for a 43-yard try. We'll see if we can actually make this one. And I think I did good on that one. The kick is away, and we should get three points. Now we are near the end of the first half here. It's a third and three from R29. He'll drop back to pass a quick third to the outside, and that will set up a fourth and inches. Now, will they come out and kick a field goal? I don't really know what they did. Apparently, they did nothing because it's still 17-10 as we have the ball back now in the third quarter. We'll throw it underneath, and does that get the first down? No, it does not. Fourth and inches. Do we get a chance to go for that? Yes, we will. All right, yeah, we're not going to punt this ball away. Let's see if we can't find a run play that I actually like. I actually know the exact play I want to run. Let's go ahead and run this zone option and see if we can't get this thing out to Dylan Turner in some open space. Fourth and inches from the 39. We'll take the step, and yeah, get that pitch out there. We get the first down. Now Turner down the sideline, makes that man miss, and is brought down to the 15. Now we come out in a five-wide set. Snyder will take the snap, and we're going to throw this one to the end zone for our tight end, who will have his second touchdown. No, he can't hang on to that one. Now on a second and 10, we are going to send this man in motion. If you saw that play in the coach sections, you know exactly what I'm running, but it's not going to work. That's a loss of one. That sets up a third and 11 for Edmund State. Now Snyder lines up under center. He'll drop back, and we're going to throw this one to the outside, and that one will be knocked away from our receiver. I thought we could force that one in. Obviously not. We will have to settle for a field goal try and try not to mess this one up the snap the hold the kick is away and apparently i didn't go far enough to the right but there is a flag and i think we're gonna get to keep the ball because that is a roughing the kicker not exactly how you want to extend the drive but i will definitely take it now a first and goal from the eight will drop back to pass and throw this one underneath and does he hold on to that yes he does second and goal from the four and let's just see if we can get another quick pass actually let's go ahead and audible this we'll give it to dylan turner see if he can't fight his way into the end zone We'll go right up the middle, and the blocking somewhat holds up, and Turner is into the end zone. Touchdown, Edmund State, and we should tie this game up. The next time we jump in, it's a third and five, so we'll see if we can keep this drive moving. And no, we can, and that's going to be a fumble. The ball just popped right up into the air. 
They have recovered it, and can we make the tackle? Yes, we will, but they have some great field position. It will, however, let us jump into this drive. A third and 10 from the 34. He'll take the snap, and a quick throw over the middle is caught all the way down to about the 10-yard line. Now, a couple plays later, it's another third down. This time, it's a third and nine from the 10. I'm going to try to play as a linebacker. I really think that's going to go terribly, though. We'll drop back into coverage. Now roll to the outside, and he's going to fire this one downfield, and we should hold them to a field goal try unless they try to fake this one. So it will be a short attempt, just about 21 yards to go up by three here late in the third quarter. The snap, and can we get back there to the block? No, we can't, and the kick is good. We get to jump into the next drive at the very start of the fourth quarter on a third and five. We'll give this one to Turner, and he will have the first down and more deep into James Madison territory. But it jumps back into simulation, and I guess we had a turnover because now they have the ball with a third and seven at the 19, and it'll be a handoff to the running back to the outside, and he will not get to the marker. It's a fourth and inches, but once again, they will kick a field goal instead of going for this one. It's another short try, this one only about 29 yards. On fourth and inches, the kick is away, and they will take a six-point lead. It finally throws us back in the game with a second and eight, with under three minutes to go. Snyder will take the snap, and looking to go downfield, we'll throw this one over the middle, and that is going to be dropped by Holt. And by Holt, I definitely meant Hart. Don't know where I got the name Holt from, but now third and eight. Snyder will drop back to pass, and we'll go to the tight end, who will make the catch, break that tackle. Now inside the 10-5, touchdown Edmund State, we should take the lead. But now the game wants me to play defense, and I am absolutely terrified. From the 35-yard line, they're going over the middle. He finds his man. That'll be a gain of eight. That brings up a second and two, and the clock is still running. This time, they'll run the read option. He goes to the outside. He has the first down across the 50 before he is brought down to the 46. That should take us down to the two-minute warning. Defense, please. We need you to come up with one stop here. First and 10. A quick throw to the outside is going to be caught and brought down for just a gain of three. They are not going to keep the no-huddle offense going here, though. Now on a second and seven. See if we can get some pressure with one of the D linemen going to the outside, and that bounces right off of his receiver. Here we go, a third and seven. It's going to be a draw play right at the middle, and Middlebrooks meets and brings him down. Fourth and six, and they are going to go for it. We're going to try to bring a blitz and see if that works out for us. He'll drop back to pass. And he's got a lot of times now. Finally under pressure, hit as he's throwing. That's a turnover on downs. Now, can we run down the rest of the clock? They will let us try. I believe all we will need is one first down. Snyder back in shotgun. This ball's going to Turner, and he gets buried in the backfield as they burn that first time out. We're going to try a jet toss here on second and 14. Hart comes over. He takes the pitch, and we go to the outside. Hart has the first down, makes that man miss, and will get brought down to the 40-yard line. But James Madison had an injury, and somehow they don't have to burn a timeout because of that, so the clock would stop. We go back to Turner on the next play for a gain of four. I have no idea if this is going to work or not, but we are going to send the man in motion. We'll fake the toss. It's a handoff to Turner again, and he is met and brought down. They burn that final timeout. Now we face a third and seven. And it will be a shotgun set. Snyder will drop back to pass. We'll throw this underneath. That is going to be caught by Hart, who will get the first down, and we should get out of here with a win. And we officially have our first win in school history. This one over James Madison, 24-23. to And I feel like every time I stepped in on offense, I played okay. I don't think I threw any super stupid passes today. The final stats for Edmond State today, Snyder goes 18 for 26, 225 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Running the ball, Turner did get 85 yards on 25 carries, but also found the end zone once. And then receiving Hart, 7 for 96, never found the end zone today, but that's because our tight end Duke Jones decided to take both passing touchdowns. And then middle linebacker Dell Slade is actually the one to lead the team in tackles today with a total of 14. He also got a sack, and then Alex King and Nick Ortiz both shared a sack, but we got no interceptions. James Madison's quarterback Dylan Morris goes 15 of 21 for 207 yards and a single touchdown. Running the ball, their running back Adai got 71 yards on 24 attempts and a touchdown. If I said his name wrong, I apologize. 
And then receiving their best one was Amari and Granger, four for 88 and a touchdown. Well, just a quick recruiting update. Uh, Sean Augustine, the kicker, has actually locked us out due to playing style. Don't really know exactly what happened there, but I will keep him up here for now just because I obviously don't have like a full board or anything. But it's really weird that he locked us out. But we have scheduled a visit with quarterback Morgan Eberly, so hopefully we can get him before Western Kentucky tries to come up and take our quarterback. But what I will say is that week four is a bye week, so we get to move on to week five, where I believe we will take on UConn, but I'll have some more recruiting stuff to do then. So Everly is going to be visiting this week. Hopefully we can get him to commit, if not, at least move him a lot further along. Verfix should commit this week. The problem is he is visiting UAB. So if they get like a massive jump, they could come back and possibly steal him from us. We still have our three-star left tackle. I've added another three-star kicker. He's not fully scouted yet, which is kind of concerning, but I did offer him a scholarship just because I had the points to. Then running back Skylar Lewis is still here. I did add a wide receiver, and that is Lyle Shermer. Now, he is listed as a bust for us, but he has 94 speed, 91 acceleration. I really don't care that he's a bust because he has a ton of speed. We are riding high off of our first win. We'll see if we can carry the momentum into today's game as we take on the 2-2 two two Yukon Huskies. Well, this game at least lets us jump in in the first quarter here. It's a third and 11. Can we get them off the field? He's under pressure, gets rid of it to the outside, and that is just straight up dropped. All right, that's just bad luck on his part. However, that did not apparently phase UConn too much. We come out later in the first quarter. We are now down 7-0, so they scored in simulation, and they're going to set up a first and goal from the one here. And it's going to be a five-wide set for Nick Evers, the former Oklahoma Sooner. He's going to drop back and look to take off, and he'll fight his way into the end zone, and just like that, they have a 14-0 lead. Scratch that, make it a 13-0 lead because they apparently could not hit the extra point, but now we finally get to jump in on offense here to start the second quarter. Facing a third and five. We're going to take this throw underneath. Never mind. No, we are not. We were hit as we were throwing. Do we at least get to kick the field goal? Yes, we will. It's going to be a 39-yard try. Hopefully, I don't completely miss this one. The snap, the hold, the kick is away, and this one will be good. However, UConn is looking to respond to that field goal. They have driven back into our red zone. It's a second and nine. And that was actually a good read by me, and we force a third and 11. I am usually absolutely awful at defense, so I'm glad I was able to make that play. Now, can we hold them to a field goal try here in the second quarter? On third down, they're going to come out in shotgun. He'll drop back, and we're trying to get by the O-lineman, rolling to the outside, and he's finally just going to throw this one away. So that will lead to a field goal try for UConn. Of about 24 yards, I'm sorry, 34 yards. I can do math. The kick is away and it is good. But what's not good is the fact that our offense once again gave them the ball back and now they are back inside the red zone again and I completely read that wrong with the safety. I don't know what I was trying to do. Touchdown UConn. But our offense has now driven down inside their red zone. A third and seven from the 19. He'll drop back to pass. And never saw anyone come open, or at least never had the time. We get sacked on the play, and it'll be another field goal try for us. But UConn burns a timeout first. So now we will come out for yet another field goal try. The snap, the hold, the kick is away, and this one will be good as well. But our defense would get us the ball back, and now we have a second and four from the 15. So we'll drop back a quick throw to the outside that's caught by speed, and he sets us up at the 10. Let's see if they are ready for a run play here. We're going to give this one to Dylan Turner as our offensive line just got thrown to the ground. Now a second and 12. Snyder back in shotgun again. We'll drop back to pass and we'll throw this one to Turner over the middle who will break that tackle, but he gets leveled down to the three and we'll burn our first time out. I am going to really hope our blocking can hold up here on third and two. Hand off to Turner and he walks into the end zone. Touchdown Edmund State. Now we are in the second half as it is a 10 point game. They face a third and four. Can we get them off the field this time? Evers back in shotgun. We'll draw back to pass. A quick throw will be caught and a quick and easy first down for them. Later on, we have them on another third down. This one a third and eight going downfield, and that one is dropped by his receiver. Otherwise, I think he might have been gone. And apparently, what's going to happen here? Defense needs your help. All right, cool. We get to jump right back in. It's a first and goal from the 10-yard line. 
We're going to try to bring a blitz and hopefully it helps. And it definitely will as he is met immediately. He's going to take the snap. It'll be a handoff to the running back who will juke his way forward and get brought down to the three yard line, setting up a third and goal. They come out in a pistol set for this play. Evers will drop back. He's going to the outside. And how did my linebacker not make a play on that one? Touchdown, UConn. Now in the fourth quarter, facing a fourth and five here, trying to keep this drive alive. We'll take the snap and a quick throw underneath is going to be caught and they give us the first down actually. However, it doesn't matter much when just a couple plays later in simulation, you now face a fourth and 17 to keep the drive moving. We'll drop back to a pass again and we're just going to try to force this one downfield and that one's going to be intercepted. Essentially just an arm punt but they may be able to return this one for a touchdown, and that's exactly what's going to happen. We'll just go to the end of this game. Well, it ends up looking a lot closer than it actually was, thanks to a couple garbage time touchdowns, really, but we fall to 1-3 on the year. Quarterback Colt Snyder went 18 of 29 for 295 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Running the ball... And we really couldn't do a lot of that. Turner got 30 yards on 13 carries, did find the end zone once, and then backup running back Marvin Sanders got a touchdown. Receiving, it looks like Mays was the only one to catch a touchdown today. Four catches for 104 yards. Defensively, outside linebacker Marlon Worthy and then middle linebacker Warren Middlebrooks both led the team in tackles with a total of 10. Worthy also got half a sack along with Dell Slade, and we get one interception that was from P.J. Jones. Quarterback Nick Evers for UConn goes 12 of 16 for 144, one touchdown and one interception. Running the ball, their running back got 109 yards and a touchdown. Evers also ran in for a touchdown along with Buckman. One of their receivers got one as well. And then receiving, their best one was Josiah Gathings. I hope I said your name right. Five for 86. And then Sheffield was the only one to catch a touchdown. One really good thing to come out of that is we do manage to get another coach upgrade here, and we're just going to go and unlock the advanced look at defensive line and linebacker. And we do manage to land the first ever commit in school history in Stanley Perfect, a three-star defensive back out of Pensacola, Florida. On top of that, defensive back PJ Jones wins the CUSA Defensive Player of the Week award. Your quick recruiting update is that Morgan Eberly is that much closer to actually committing to us, which is obviously really cool, but I did have to move around some of our recruiting hours because a two-star right tackle, apparently James Madison came out of nowhere and is trying to get him, so I had to throw a few more hours into that guy, but obviously you already saw, we do have our first commit in Stanley Perfect. And now we get our first ever CUSA game against Jacksonville State, who is coming into this matchup at 3-1. So obviously, they seem to be a pretty solid team. The first time we get to jump in today is a third and five. It is still zero to zero, though. Snyder will drop back to pass, and we're going to go to our tight end over the middle for the first down inside the 20-yard line, which means we get to stay in this game now. A first and 10 from the 16. We'll take the snap. It's a quick throw to the outside. That RPO is going to work to perfection as Dominique Speed walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Edmund State. However, Jacksonville State would respond with a touchdown of their own, but now it just wants us to run an offensive drive, and I am perfectly fine with that. Hand off to Dylan Turner, will juke to the outside and get brought down for a six-yard carry. Now on a second and four, out of a shotgun set, we'll drop back to pass again, and we'll take this throw underneath for an easy first down. Speed spins out nobody and is brought down to the 39. On the very next play, a three-yard run from Dylan Turner would result in a second and seven, and we're going to go right back to our running back up the middle and getting close to the marker. Does he fight for it? It's a third and inches. And yeah, we're going to run this jet touch pass because you know what? It's one of the best plays in the entire game. So we're going to send a heart in motion and toss it to him. Hopefully the blocking sets up and it doesn't really. Do we get the first down? Yes, we do. On the next play, backup running back Troy Walker would come into the game and get a one yard carry. So now it's a second and nine. And we're going to take this easy throw out to Dominique Speed, who once again won't spin out anybody, but does have the first down. Snyder back in a five wide set this time. We'll take the snap, and we're going to look to go downfield. We're going to lob this one to the end zone. That one will be knocked away. Was trying to go to Ty Mays there. Obviously does not work out. Now a second and ten, and we'll give this one to Dylan Turner to go right up the middle, who will juke to the outside and get met and brought down near the 20. An incomplete pass on the next play brings up a second and ten. 
And we go back to Turner, who is going to get met immediately and brought down. That should take us to the end of the first quarter, but we will face a third and nine. As long as I take care of the ball, we should at least get a field goal attempt out of this drive. We'll take the snap. We'll throw underneath. That'll be caught by Speed, who was having a pretty productive first quarter or first half, and he gets the first down. On the next play, we would get a two-yard gain on a jet pass, so now it's a second and eight, and Snyder will drop back to pass again, going to the outside, and I definitely just tried to force that ball in and please don't turn that into a pick six but there is nobody in front of him and I don't think we're going to catch him a great drive is going to end absolutely horribly we finally get to jump back into this game with 5 13 to go here in the half we are still down by seven and we're going to take this underneath throw right here over the middle and Mays can't come up with the catch are you kidding me just straight up drop that one and now we need to get a big stop Third and six from the 50. You know what? Bring everybody or at least every linebacker in on a blitz. Force him to get rid of this ball quickly. And he is going to get rid of it quickly to an open man for the first down. A few plays later, it's a third and five from the 31-yard line. He's dropping back to pass, throws it underneath, and that one will fall incomplete. So this should be a long field goal try. And I don't think they got, actually it said kickoff, so they did make it. So now we get to run a two-minute drill. From our own 25-yard line, it'll be a handoff to Turner, who goes to the outside, starts this drive with a first down run. Back in his shotgun set again, we'll drop back to the pass and throw this one underneath. That'll be caught by Hart, and he's going to fight for the first down to about the 50. Snyder back in a shotgun set again. The clock is still running. And we're going to take this throw down the field, and that'll be caught by Rowe. Never mind, it's knocked out of his hands. Thought we had a big play there, but now a second and 10 from the 50. We'll drop back. And try to lob this one downfield, and that one's going to get intercepted. I tried to fit it over the linebacker. And are we going to have a second pick six today? No, we should be able to catch him. Never mind, he breaks that tackle. Touchdown, Jacksonville State. This game is unraveling very quickly. It wants us to try this two-minute drill again. Down by 17. We definitely need some sort of points here. And we're going to get intercepted again because I tried to force that one into heart. That is not really where I wanted to throw the ball. I don't know why I pressed that button. All right, this half is going horribly. We jump in later into the third quarter where it is 34 to 14. We face a third and five, and we'll give this one to Turner, who's going to go to the outside using his speed down the sideline, makes that man miss, and Dylan Turner breaking tackles into the end zone. Well, at least we have that to look at today. The next time we jump in, it's a third and five, and we are down 37 to 27. Not real sure what's going on in this game, but we are going to go deep here on this play. That'll be caught by Mays, and he is into the end zone. This is a one-score game. And we have a chance to get that one score on this drive. We get the ball back from simulation. It is 37 to 34. Now facing a third and five, as Turner has to immediately break that tackle, and he'll get met and brought down. I did not think he was going to get that first, but definitely turn that into a positive. Now a couple plays later in simulation, it's a first and goal from the seven. We're going to take the snap and give this one to Turner, who is met immediately. That's going to set up a second and goal. Snyder will take the snap and looks to pass. We'll throw this over the middle, caught by Turner, who will break that tackle and fight his way down to the one-yard line. And now backup running back Troy Walker has checked into the game, but Snyder is still in a shotgun set. We'll take the snap. It'll be a toss out to Walker, who can walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Edmond State. We may just win this game. But we will need help from the defense now. 37 to 41 with 229 remaining. And it's a quick throw to the outside and he gets by both guys. And now off to the races will get caught near the 50. I thought there was a chance he was going to be gone there. But they will run a no huddle offense now. He's going to line up in a shotgun set. The running back is standing still like a statue. He will finally move, recognizing that they need to actually run a play. It's a quick throw to the outside who makes the catch, breaks one tackle and is brought down. They would actually burn a timeout with 2.05 to go rather than let it go to the two-minute warning. Now they give it to the running back, and he'll get met and brought down. They do get the first down, though, as it goes to the two-minute warning now officially. First and 10 from the 40-yard line now. He'll take the snap, and it's a play fake to the running back. Lobbing downfield, he finds his man. How do we not make a play on that? A minute 50 left in the game now. He'll drop back to the pass, dropping farther back. Has all the time in the world, finally finds his man, and that'll be a short gain, but they do have an injury. And I believe they may have actually ruled that incomplete. It's now a second and 10. With a minute 45 to go, he takes the snap, and he's going to get swarmed in the backfield. A loss of two. That sets up a third and 12 now. 
He's back in his shotgun set again. We'll take the snap and goes to the end zone, but overthrows his man. That could have won the game for Jacksonville State, but now it'll be a fourth and 12. Will he go right back to the end zone or just try to convert on the play? We're actually, never mind. We will control alignment. I tried to go to the linebacker, but he's going to lob to the outside and they find their man for the first down. A minute 26 remaining. It's now a first and goal. That'll be a handoff for the running back, and he will fight his way down to the one-yard line. Does not get in. Now a second and goal. Back in a shotgun set again. And he's going to quickly roll to the outside, throw to the end zone, and he finds his man. Touchdown, Jacksonville State. We now get to come out down by three with a minute and 11 seconds to play here in the game. On the first play, we'll take the underneath route caught by Hart, and that's going to start this drive with about a seven-yard play. We do have all three timeouts should we need to burn any. We're actually going to change that to a go route for speed. So Snyder will drop back to the pass and fire this over the middle as well. Once again caught by Hart and that will temporarily stop the clock. Now 45 seconds to go. Snyder back in a shotgun set again. We'll take the snap. Once again going over the middle. They are not guarding that at all and Rowe has the first down. We'll burn our first timeout. Snyder now with a shotgun set. Turner in the backfield. He'll drop back to the pass. And we're going to look to go deep downfield, but could not get the pass off. Second and 10. With 35 seconds to go, Snyder will take the snap. And a quick throw to the outside will be caught by Mays. And that's not going to get much. Only a gain of seven. We'll have to burn our second timeout. It sets up a third and three with 29 seconds to go in the game. And we're going to go deep downfield. Does he overthrow his man? Yes, he does. Hart had a step. And on fourth and three, we have to kick a 53-yard field goal. And they are going to try to ice our kicker. I honestly do not know if our kicker has this kind of range. He does have 15 mile an hour wins behind him though. But this is moving pretty fast. And I think we may have been okay with it. The kick is away and we will tie this game up at 44. And we officially head to overtime. So we get the ball first starting at the 25 yard line. It'll be a handoff to Turner right up the middle. And that'll be a solid gain of 6 yards. Snyder back in shotgun again. We're going to send our man in motion. It'll be a toss to the outside. Caught by Mays, who gets to the edge. Inside the 10-5, makes the man miss, and is brought down at the one-yard line. This worked earlier in the game. Why wouldn't it work now? First and goal. And we'll get that option to the outside, but it does not work this time. Second and goal from the five. Another shotgun set. We'll take the snap. And a quick throw to the outside will be caught by Mays. Touchdown, Edmund State. And I really expected it to give us this like the entire drive, but I guess not. We're just going to jump in on a third and 11. He's going to take the snap and looks to pass. Roll to the outside under pressure. Get rid of it at the last possible second. He'll break that tackle and then get met and brought down for a fourth and seven. Surely they will let us play this play and they absolutely will. All right, guys, if we get this stop, we complete this comeback. Fourth and seven from the 22 yard line. He'll take the snap. A quick throw and a quick catch keeping this ho or keeping their hopes alive. From the nine yard line now, they come out in shotgun. With a first and goal, he'll take the snap and he's gonna roll to the outside. Please get that sack and that is a massive loss. And that sack came from Dell Slade and it sets up a second and a goal from the 20 and now that's gonna be a false start. So they are right back where this drive started but now it's a second and goal from the 25. He's dancing around the pocket. He is going to take off and get some of those yards back. It sets up a third and goal from the 15. All right, I will stop trying to rush the passer because I don't think I'm that good at it. So on third and goal, I will be controlling middle Brooks here over the middle and hopefully not allowing a touchdown. And he's under pressure and gets rid of it in the last second. It brings up a fourth and goal. All right, who do we want to control this time? We'll go ahead and control Streeter back here. Donatello Streeter, our starting safety. On a fourth and goal from the 15, I imagine they're just going to go to the end zone here. He's throwing to the outside, and that one will be intercepted by Westbrooks. And we're going to take this chance to try to get a pick six, but it will not happen. But we do get out of here with a win. Obviously, this one became a shootout here, and we had to lead a massive comeback. We were down 24 to 7 at one point, but we come back, get the win, and improve to 2 and 3 on the year. But more importantly, we just won our first ever conference game behind a massive day from quarterback Colt Snyder. He finishes today 31 of 46 for 430 yards, five touchdowns, and three interceptions. Running the ball, Dylan Turner goes for 133 yards on 26 carries and a touchdown of his own. 
and Troy Walker even got a touchdown today. And then receiving, Mays got eight catches for 109 yards and two scores. And Dominique Speed had a really, really good day. Six catches, 116 yards, and two touchdowns. And then Bo McKnight apparently got a touchdown in simulation because I don't remember throwing that one. The leading tackler today goes to Warren Middlebrooks, who came away with 10. We got three sacks, one from Marlon Worthy, one from Dell Slade, and one from Nikki Wolf. This one from Dell Slade was absolutely massive. It was the one in overtime. And then interceptions, Russell Westbrooks comes away with the game-winning one. Zion Turner ends up going 19 for 33, 229 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. On the ground, where did all of their touchdowns come from? Because he only threw through, uh, take that back, I think I did throw two pick sixes, so you know, that's probably where they came from. But the running back got 89 yards on 11 carries. And then receiving, Rudolph 92 yards on seven catches, and Spectre caught two touchdowns, and Sean Brown caught a touchdown. And following that game, quarterback Morgan Eberle has officially decided to commit to the Edmond State Scissor Tales, so we get our quarterback of the future. And wide receiver Ty Mays ends up winning the CUSA Offensive Player of the Week award. And then I guess something to do with that performance unlocked Sean Augustine again. So now we have two kickers on our list here. I'm going to keep both on here, and I guess we'll keep the first one to commit. Augustine is pretty good. We obviously saw the 82 kick power, 77 accuracy. But then Luis Lorenzo has 89 kick power. He's a lot less accurate, but a lot more leg power. But week seven is a bye week, so let's go in and jump to the next week and figure out if anyone else wants to commit. No one else commits to us, but we do lose right tackle Paul Way as he has now committed to James Madison. I kind of figured we were going to lose him once James Madison really started to go after him. But that is going to wrap up this episode of the Edmund State Dynasty, and the next episode we will pick up here in week 8 as we take on Mid-Tennessee State.